you're not a hero in your own eyes. You're not, you're not someone who you respect. You know, you're doing what you got to do to get by, but ultimately, you're not respecting yourself. And I think we all have a certain amount of appreciation and respect for hero figures. You know, like, we all look at, like, the guy who never lies and always does the right thing and fucking helps everybody out. And that's the John Wayne character, you know, that's, that's the, right. the ultimate hero. And he's like, this is a battle that you will fight for the rest of your life. But the key is to fight it, not to give in. Don't give in to that resistance. To fight, Just to fight that resistance, and in doing so, every day you do so, you have won the battle for that day. And you will continue to fight that battle. And when you look at your own life and you don't stack up, you're a thief, you stole money from your wife's purse and you know, you, 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 you don't want to smoke cigarettes but you fucking have to, you, you can't deal with the stress you smoke, you devalue yourself. You slowly start devaluing yourself. You, when you look at yourself, you realize that if you were judging yourself, you would judge yourself unfavorably. So no matter who you, you can't pretend you're the, 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 the hero of, of your story. You can be the hero of your own story that woke up today. You can be the hero of your own story that at 40 years of age stopped, got out of bed and said, I'm not doing this anymore. Only by my instincts and only by my morals and my ideals and my mind, and I'm gonna be dead honest with myself because I'm realizing this is not gonna last forever. I'm going to get myself in shape and I'm going to eat healthy and I'm going to do this because this is this is me now. I decide that this is me. And people have to realize that you are not your past. You are not all oh, the yeah. times you fucked up. You're not all the times you were drunk. That's not you. What you you are the person who's learned from a great deal of experience. When you're alone with your thoughts, you get an idea of what your thoughts actually are. If you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations, of Ugh. you wanting to be liked by these other people, you can run into a trap and you 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 set up a life that you didn't really want. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. You're trapped in this situation where you have a mortgage, you've got credit card bills, you've got student loans you have to pay, you have a bunch of shit going on that you have to continue to feed. And all that, and especially if you have a family and you have to feed them, oh my goodness. Then you're fully locked in, you can't take any chances whatsoever. And Oftentimes, people make the mistake of getting stuck. And it is just a tactical mistake, just like it would be a mistake if you got stuck on a video game. Just like it would be a mistake if you followed a map incorrectly and you got stuck in the woods. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. And we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys, we're not going to always make the right steps. And sometimes you have to back up and try again. And if you're in a position where you can't back up and try again, you've trapped yourself. Because people define themselves by the past. Instead of thinking about who they are now, instead of they, they still look back at a mistake they made and don't just get past that mistake, grow and learn, but dwell on it. Think oh. it defines them. I mean, th there's definitely pitfalls in life. You're gonna run into them. We all are. No, you can learn and grow if you survive. Somewhere along the line, they didn't face enough of the adversity to realize that there's sometimes you just gotta get up and get shit done. There's sometimes where you have to fucking pull yourself up and you have to push forward even if you wanna stay in bed. Having that safety net just provided him with a way to stay in bed. Kept him weak. Have an opportunity. Every time things go wrong, Every time things feel terrible, you have an opportunity to learn from whatever makes you feel terrible and never allow it to happen again. Push forward. The system will set out honeypots for people to get trapped in. The system will set out 
the ideas of retirement, the ideas of the golden years, providing you benefits, providing you a healthy work environment. Why? Well, because they want people to work for them. They don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape. They want to set it up so that you stick around, stick around in some sort of an unsatisfying world. It's up to you to see that video game problem, to see that issue as it comes up on the map. And no, no, I think this is a right turn to see all the problems that could potentially lay in front of you and calculate your your future and then also look around all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like them and most people get stuck in these patterns or they define themselves as a person who doesn't follow through on their ideas or a person who doesn't pursue their real interests and loves you define yourself by that. Well, you know, I guess when well, I start yeah. things, then I quit. No, you don't. No, you have started things and you quit. And it gives you a horrible sense of regret that's made you define yourself by that. You don't have to do that. If I look back on anything I've ever done, mistakes I've ever made, um, paths that I, you know, something that I put out that I didn't quite think, man, maybe I just waited three months before I released that, or maybe I should have, you know, re-edited that blog post a couple more times before I put it online, or the things that I've done have dri driven me crazy, but yelling at someone I didn't have to yell at them for, or whatever. But the, the most important thing is always for all people to recognize that you're not who you were a year ago. You're not who you were five years ago. You're not who you were last week. So you got to regulate how much you dwell on regrets of the past. You really no got to be careful. It's also directly proportionate to the amount of hardships that people face in life, their ability to face hardships. You know, and there's a lot of folks that live life on a cushy cloud of marshmallows and bullshit, and then one day something goes wrong. And then look at the people that are, have kind of taken chances and navigated their way. What do they do differently than you? insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not that you step back and you go you know I don't just don't I just don't want to look at myself that closely but the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is going to get the more rational results seize the day winning isn't everything it's the only thing <laughs> do not wait for your ship to come in swim out to it when the going gets tough the tough get going you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take if you can dream it you can do it wherever you go go with all your heart if man has done his best what else is there success is going from failure to fair without losing your enthusiasm at first you don't succeed try try again genius is one percent inspiration 99 percent perspiration i think i can i think i can i think i can there's no substitute for hard work willing is not enough we must do live the life you imagine do or do not there is no try action is the foundational key to all success discouragement fair the two of the surest stepping stones to success the cure is not to dream less but to dream more to dream all the time if you don't know where you're going you will wind up somewhere else just do it I heard those quotes growing up all the time. When I first heard some, I memorized them. Others I wrote down. But not one of them motivated me for more than a day or two. It was a much less inspirational quote that inspired me from a much less famous person. It was a doctor at UCLA. He said, Steve, you've got inoperable tumors all over your liver. Worst case scenario, you have five years to live. and I can't control the cards I'm dealt, just how I play the hands. If you need inspiring words, don't do it. Today's talk is not about death, it's about life and how to live, specifically about childhood dreams and about how you can try to achieve them. Dreams will come to you. If you live properly, the dreams will come to you.
And I was dreaming, always dreaming. It was an easy time to dream. When you turn on your television set and men are landing on the moon, anything is possible. And we should never lose that spirit. Okay, bad news. I had cancer. I was dying. But I got more bad news. You are all dying too. And what are you dying to do? Don't skate forward any further in your life without answering that question. But I've basically just given you all the same diagnosis I was given. Your time is limited. And that's a real diagnosis, so what now? Okay, like most people when they're told they're dying, you're probably going through the five stages of grief. The first stage is denial. I'm not dying, I'm healthy. Stage two is anger. Urgh. Stage three is bargaining. Okay, we're all dying. Stage four is depression. Stage five, the final stage, is acceptance. Okay, I'm not immortal. So what now? But well, let me tell you what I did when I was told I might only have five years to live. First of all, I got a lot of advice. A lot of friends wanted to help. A friend of my wife told me that maybe this, this news would give me a whole new perspective. Someone else told me that I should live every day like it was my last. So what were my childhood dreams? Being in the National Football League, this is one of the childhood dreams I didn't achieve. All right? And it's very important to know that if you don't achieve your dreams, you can still get a lot by trying for it. There's an expression I love, experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. But the most wonderful thing my parents did was they let me paint my bedroom. I said one day, I want to paint stuff on the walls. And they said, okay. So I had a rocket ship and we lived in a ranch, so I wanted an elevator. I wasn't sure where it would go. But the great thing is that they let me do it. And they felt that letting me express my creativity was more important than the pristine nature of the walls. The brick walls that are in our way are there for a reason. They are not there to keep us out. They are there to give us a way to show how much we want it. But what I kept coming back to when I had time by myself and no one was giving me advice was my dreams. The dreams I had put aside, the ones that I thought I had plenty of time to reach. But now that I realized I had a finite amount of time, I had to ask myself, what did I want to accomplish? I'm not a worst case scenario guy, but if I really only had five years to live, what was it that I wanted to make sure happened? For me, as a comedian, it was a dream I had since I was 12 years old. It was to perform my comedy on The Late Show with David Letterman. So, let me be clear before I move on. I was a comedian already, okay? I was making a living at it. No day job, full-time comedian, making a good living in comedy clubs, colleges, corporate events around the world. That was a pretty big feat in itself. But six years into my comedy career, I kinda stopped chasing the Letterman dream. I was waiting for it to come to me. I was waiting for someday, not chasing it anymore. That's a very important lesson for all of us mortals here today. Someday isn't on the calendar. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's on there about four times a month. No someday. But when it comes to our dreams, it's probably the busiest day of the week is someday, right? So learning that lesson, I just tried, decided that I was gonna refocus my attention back on that dream. I was gonna pull out all the stops and I gave myself a goal of getting on Letterman within one year. I was going to make someday happen. I started yelling my dream to anyone who would listen. Started calling in every favor I was owed. 
I found out everyone who worked on the show and begged them to help me get an audition. I even started uh, asking people at comedy clubs after they'd seen me to email the show and beg Dave to book me. And guess what? I didn't make it. My ironically named deadline came and went. But I was so renewed about my dream and my newfound passion for it, I decided to give myself an extension. One more year to get on Letterman. Didn't happen. And then another. Nope. Sounds like bad news, right? Well, it was. I would have loved to get on the show in that first year, but something great happened over the year, those years. Those three years weren't spent dying. They were spent living. Living a dream. And let me tell you, there is something, if you've ever chased a dream, you know that it lights a fire in your heart. That whether you reach it or not, it warms everyone around you and everything around you. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to keep going. Because that dream is so important. You can't wait, you can't wait for someday to happen. You need to make things, you need to make things go out. Wouldn't the world be a better place if, if we're all inspired? If, if the world wasn't full of uninspired people? I know I felt better when I was inspired. But why do people stop chasing their dreams? I don't think people choose to be uninspired. Why do you think people stop chasing their dreams? Everyone wants to achieve them, why do people leave them behind? That was a tough question to answer. I wanted to give her an honest answer, not some cliche response or a motivational line. So I thought about it for a long time. I knew that cancer had motivated me to pick my dream up again, but why did I stop chasing it in the first place? Why does anyone stop? Well, when the answer came to me, it was hard to swallow, let alone spit out and say it loud, but I told her. We're all taught that life is tough. Life's a bitch. Life is hard. But it's not. It's pretty easy, right? It's pretty easy to skate by and go through life, right? We wake up every day, most of us in the world, with a roof over our heads, a big, comfy bed under our butts, a fridge full of food. Most of us in the world, especially here in America, never have to worry about starvation or homelessness. We have friends and family that'll help us out when those things come. Those are the things that made life dangerous 100 years ago. Now we complain if life isn't convenient. This isn't a statement on modern society. This is a statement about motivation. Life is easy. It's easy to skate by. It's pretty easy to grow up, put your dreams aside, leave your passions behind, take a job that you, re you don't even really mind. Raise some kids who will most likely be inspired to do the exact same thing. Go from point A to point B to point C until you end up at point Z, where you pass away and there's a line of people waiting to get up and tell everyone else who knew you what a good life you had. Nothing bad about that, nothing wrong with that, but nothing great about it, nothing inspiring about that. It's easy to look at a dream as something way off in the distance, something that might or might not be accomplished, a thing, an object, a goal, a thought that runs through our mind every now and then, a noun. A dream is also a verb. It has to be lived, it has to be done, it has to be furthered, it has to be acted upon, it needs to be chased. It's not just an idea or a result. To dream encompasses every step that it takes to get there. So I'm going to give you all a challenge here. Figure out the answer to that question. What are you dying to do? Don't skate forward any further in your life without answering that question. But if you don't know the answer, don't go to sleep tonight without answering that question. 
Don't wait till someday to answer that question. There's nothing more important in your life than figuring that out. When you do figure it out, then when you go to sleep, you sleep like a kid again. Because then you'll be going to sleep not to dream, but with a dream. And waking up with one. Thank you. I told you about my dream. I didn't reach my, my Letterman dream by my deadline or my extended deadline. Nope, it took me five years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Maison. Five years of living. Five of years of living for that dream. And I was very lucky. My tumors during that time, they didn't grow. I stayed healthy. But I had that wake-up call, and I'm giving you all the same wake-up call. We're all dying. But if you're not chasing your dream, you're already dead. I don't think complaining and whining really solves the problem. This is Jackie Robinson, first black major leaguer, had it in his contract not to complain if people spit on him. This is the instinct that says, you've had enough. This is the instinct that says, you've, you've, you've given it your best shot. You can, you can stand down. You can back off. You can take a knee. This is the instinct that says, you can rest now. Do not listen to that instinct. Do not listen. That instinct is a liar and wants to bring you down. That's the instinct that's a, a defense mechanism. It wants to give you an out, a place to run to. A lot of people never get to where they want to be because they'll never stop complaining about where they're at. I must say it again. A lot of people will never get to where they want to be because they will never stop complaining about where they're at. The word complain means to remain or to stay overnight. So if you want to stay right where you're at, just keep complaining about it, and I can pretty much guarantee you that you'll still be there. And they'll tell you you did the best you could. No, they'll say the deck, the deck, the deck was stacked against you. And they'll say it's not your fault. And they'll tell you it's okay to stop. It's okay to settle. It's okay to give up. That is the instinct you need to fight. You need to push back, to smash into the ground. Do not take the easy way out. Do not give up based on instinct. If you are forced to stand down, to retreat, so that you can rebuild and re-attack, so be it but make that decision based on logic, not on the instinct of surrender and defeat. Get up, go, fight on. I know my history, I've, I've, I've been sort of uh, on all sides of uh, my journey. You know, I didn't, I didn't have success very early. Um, and I went through some very dark times. And you know what I mean? One thing I kept doing is, you know, inspiring myself, looking for inspiration and growing. And, uh, and it hasn't stopped and I want to keep doing that. And I also uh, want to inspire others. You know, there are millions of me sitting at home right now and they don't know it. And it's just good to be able to get this sort of platform to sort of say, come on, man, go for it. So listen, man, no speed. Yes. I don't do things for money, and I've been broke most of my life. So because of that, 
I can't sort of suddenly go, I need to do a job just to get some cash, you know what I mean? I know that's a lot of times it is people's motivations because people need to eat, but in my position, I've been poor most of my life, so now... I think, I think my imagination has always kept me going, you know what I mean? You know, just imagine myself collecting awards. Just imagine myself, you know what I mean, getting big parts. Imagine myself working with the greatest actors. My imagination was the one, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you not overthink it, but you just kind of like, yeah, man, I see myself driving that car one day. And I get that. Actually, if I can see myself doing it, I could probably do it. So you can't bottle that up and sell it to someone. You either can do it or you can't, but everybody can imagine themselves, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's important not to give yourself boundaries, which we can do quite easily, okay? People talk about aiming for the skies. Sometimes even aiming for the skies is intimidating. Just don't give yourself boundaries. Your sky and my sky might be different, you know what I mean? But neither of us will touch the sky if we give ourselves boundaries, you know what I mean? Whatever your sky is, whatever your biggest dream is, I might have already touched that, you know? So in other words, what sky? Where does the sky end? I'd rather people go, you know what, I'm not going to restrict myself to going, I can only do this or I can only do that, or I have to do it this way or I have to do it that way. The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. When I was 16, contemplating being an actor, mm -hmm. I was in sound systems DJing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, it was like that or this. So I always go back to DJ. I always have a studio, I always have turntables, always. Been doing it a long time, you know what I mean? And there was a, there was a, a, a drive to be famous, to be, you know, that, that pinnacle, to be that guy. And I'm not, I'm not, that, I'm not, it's not.